So I've got to say that Redshift is the fastest render I've ever used. And I'm not talking about compared to things like EV and Unreal Engine and stuff like that. I'm talking about real proper rendering. And I was really excited to see that it's finally come to Blender. So how fast is it? Well, you can see some of the tests that I've been posting up on Instagram here at the moment. And I'm getting about four times the speed versus cycle. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, but it works a little bit differently to the way you sort of set up cycles renderers usually in Blender. Um, so I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a quick start guide so you can kind of get up and running as soon as possible. Um, but I will mention also that this is a beta. So there's going to be bugs, there's missing features, you know, stuff like motion blur and uh, denoising aren't in there yet. Uh, also, they only recommend that you use uh, Blender 2.90. Um, you can use other versions if you want, but why make your life harder? So you just install Redshift as usual using the installer for your operating system. Uh, there's no free demo yet, so you will have to already own Redshift. But I'm sure they'll be releasing one soon so that everyone can check it out. Uh, now to install it in Blender is a little tricky, so let me just show you what you've got to do. Uh, if you go Edit Preferences, in your Add-ons tab here you want to click this Install button. And we have to find the Redshift installation directory. And in Windows by default it goes into a hidden folder. Uh, so you have to go to your local drive here, C. Um, in this filters menu here, make sure you have show hidden selected. And then you can just go program data, find your Redshift folder here, go into plugins, Blender, 2.90. And then here it is, Redshift for Blender.zip. So select that file and click install add-on. And now it should come up in the list here automatically. If it doesn't, you can just put in uh, Redshift here in the search box and it'll show up. Uh, so then all you need to do is click the checkbox and it'll take a second. Um, you have to make sure that you've done the authorization process for your license, otherwise this won't work. Once you've done that, you're good to go. Uh, so I'm just gonna build a simple scene here just to show you guys how it all works. Uh, but I'm going to delete this light and this camera because there's a couple of things I'm going to show you to do with those. We're going to keep uh, the default cube, but we'll go GZ1 and put it up onto the ground plane. Then we're going to go Shift A, add another plane, S to scale, and just bring that up a little bit bigger. And to enable Redshift, you just go into the All Render Settings here where it says Render Engine, and then just pick Redshift Render up. And first thing you'll notice if you click the Render Mode, nothing will happen. This is not actually working at the moment. The first little gotcha here is Redshift needs a camera in the scene, even if you're not rendering from that camera. So let's go Shift A, add a camera, and now when we click Rendered Mode, it'll have a think for a second, and then you'll see progress messages appearing up here in the top left corner. Now, we don't have any lights at the moment, obviously, so that's why everything's black. Say we wanted to put HDR in, if you go to the environment settings here and click the environment, button again, it'll create the interface here. Um, but you'll notice still like nothing's happening in the viewport. Uh, this is because these environment settings rely on having global illumination enabled. And because I don't know why, but for some reason in Redshift, the default is global illumination is off, right? I don't know why we're not in the 90s. So let's go back into the render settings here and set brute force, brute force, which just basically means ray traced uh, GI. So that will kind of enable things like your physical sky and stuff like that. But generally what, how Redshift works in other software is it doesn't really use these environment settings, but instead you can add what's called a dome light. And so let's do that now. Shift A, add RS dome light. And then your kind of environment settings are going to live here in the light tab. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Uh, so let's just pick like an HDR. Uh, something like that will do the trick. Uh, you've got controls in here for like intensity and stuff like that as well. You can enable and disable the background. Um, so let's just turn the intensity down a little bit. Yep, that'll do. Now let's get into some creating some materials or shaders here. So if we split this window, go shader editor, and then let's pick the cube object. Redshift doesn't actually convert your blender shader. So you can see if we adjust this diffuse color, you know, nothing's happening here. What we need to do is kind of make Redshift versions of these. Uh, so we do that by Shift A, and then, so you want a Redshift output, which is like this material output here. Um, then you also want a Redshift material, RS material. And that's kind of like the equivalent of like your all-in-one sort of principled BSDF. 
So let's hook those together like so. And you'll see all the settings are kind of hidden behind these rollouts here. So let's just roll out kind of base properties. Um, and then you can click the color here just to check it. And that looks like it's working nicely. You can delete these if you want. These can stay here if you want to render in Cycles or Eevee. You can keep these if you want, but let's just delete them. Um, and then click our little ground plane here. And annoyingly, if you click new to create a new material, it doesn't actually create the redshift stuff for you. You still have to do it all manually. Another kind of annoying thing is at the moment, there's, there isn't really a lot as far as kind of procedural textures go. There's no like kind of checkerboard and stuff like that. But what we do have is this max on noise. This is actually pretty cool. It has a lot of great noises. I think they're from Cinema 4D or something. And so just like in Blender, you can just hook the out color into like the diffuse color, for instance, and that's working for us there. Um, but you'll notice also if you roll out these settings, there's not a lot here. It seems like it's pretty bare bones. Uh, in Redshift in Blender at the moment, a lot of properties are kind of hidden in the property panel here, which you can get to by pushing the N key. And so you have to actually go to this item tab here and then roll out these properties here. And you'll see, you'll get a lot more stuff. So for instance, with our max on noise, you can now see the type parameter here, which you can't actually see on the node interface itself. So let's just pick, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. We can kind of pick just any one at random. No, that looks pretty cool. Uh, you can set these kind of colors here. And so this is, Importantly, this also goes for the RS material. By default, Blender uses a metallic workflow, uh, but you'll notice there's no metallic um, setting in here because what you need to do is go into the, into the properties panel here and you'll see you've got this Fresnel type. And at the moment it's set to IOR, which means it uses this IOR value to kind of adjust how um, reflective, I guess, the object is based on real world parameter. Um, but you can just switch to metalness here and now you have your metalness uh, parameter, just like in Blender. You also might want to pick uh, GDX here under BF, BRDF, which is also a default um, in Blender. It's pretty much what most um, software uses nowadays. So let's set up our camera. We'll drop back into solid mode, pick the camera view, and then we're just going to view set to lock, and then we can kind of just use the navigation tools to navigate to the view we want from the camera. Another great feature of Redshift is the displacement and subdivision surfaces. Um, so let's give that a bit of a bash. Uh, you can do it the standard Blender way by adding a subdivision surface modifier and it will render all of this just fine. Um, but what you don't have here is any kind of adaptive subdivision. So adaptive subdivision is pretty important because what it does is like in my ocean tutorial, uh, it kind of renders a lot more detail where it's closer to the camera and like less detail when it's far away. So you're not sort of rendering uh, more geometry than you need to. To use the redshift subdivision surfaces, we've got to go into the objects properties tab here and turn on this tessellation parameter. And you'll see we've got a bunch of settings here. Um, minimum edge length is basically how many pixels each kind of polygon will use. Um, so let's like turn that down to like two and then we can give that a quick render. And there we go, we've got a nice uh, smooth surface here. And no matter how close or far away you get, uh, it'll always make sure that there's enough detail to keep that surface smooth as long as you're not hitting this kind of maximum subdivisions here. So this one you can kind of turn up just in case, um, but otherwise it will kind of work all that sort of stuff out for you automatically. This is also great for displacement. So let's give that a little bit of a go. Let's collapse all these tabs here. And so to do that, we need to add a RS displacement node, hook that into the displacement on this output here. And then we can plug a texture map you can see here um, into that displacement node. So let's just use one of these noises again. Hook that in like so. And uh, one thing I forgot to do is in the object properties tab again, we actually have to enable displacement. So let's turn that on. Uh, you might need to restart the render. So we'll click off onto the shader view and then back to the render. And sometimes if geometry doesn't update properly, uh, even if you restart the render and it doesn't update properly, uh, you can just tab into edit mode, tab back out, and then it should update, force an update of geometry in the renderer. 
But there you go, we've got just basically from a cube, we've got this kind of really smooth sort of displacement going on here. Um, and we can even like, uh, we can crank the detail up a little bit here, maybe turn up this complexity thing. Um, you can do things like adjust the scale of the displacement itself. So we could turn that up a little bit. Cool. When we do a full render here with F12, you'll notice it's pretty grainy in sort of this sort of area here and, and overall in general. In old school Redshift, what you had to do was like get in and adjust sampling on individual lights and your shaders and your GI and all that kind of stuff. And it was a real pain in the ass. But now they have a new setting and it's kind of buried again. Um, but if we go down into system in your render settings tab under experimental options, and if you turn on this enable automatic sampling here and then hit the render button again and Redshift will kind of look at everything and it'll look at the contrast of the image and try and work out exactly what is the best sort of sampling settings to use. And then here's the result here, all the noise has disappeared. Obviously it takes a little bit longer to render um, because we're rendering at higher quality, but this way you don't have to stuff around trying to work out exactly, you know, all the right settings to use. And then if you want, it, want things to render quicker uh, with lower quality, you just go into this output tab here, go into unified sampling, and then you just need to turn up this adaptive error threshold. So 0.01 or less is a good final sort of image quality to use, but if you're just doing test renders or something, you could probably turn this up to like 0.3 and that'll render like a whole lot faster. Uh, so let's have a look at some other kind of light types that we can use. We'll go shift A, add a light, and you've got, you know, your blender sort of lights here, um, but then after, underneath you'll see this RS lights. Um, so we can do, um, generally, you're gonna use most of the time an RS physical light. And that contains a whole bunch of different kinds of lights. If you go into here, into the light tab, you can uh, set it to be all the different kind of types of lights that, that Blender uses. Um, then you also have the, all the redshift kinds up here, like dome light, portal light, all this kind of stuff. Now let's turn this onto a rendered view here. Um, I might just turn the dome light off for a second. So we've got this enable, we can just turn that off. And so that we're just seeing our RS physical light here. And we'll just pull it up a bit. I might just unlock this camera view so we can pan around a little bit. Um, so one little kind of bug you'll notice already is even though this is kind of a square light shape here, you can see that the actual redshift light, which is this kind of black box here, is using an, a, a rectangle sort of shape. Um, you can't actually do a square shape in redshift, so you just gotta make sure that both of these equal the same value and you'll get the square shape here. Okay, and another thing you might have noticed as well is you can actually see the redshift light and that's a default in redshift. Uh, you can simply get rid of it by turning off this visible checkbox and then they're kind of, they'll be invisible like the Blender default. Well, that's it for this one. Hope you guys found it interesting. If you run into any problems, you got any comments or whatever, please drop them down below. Uh, and you know, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you next time.